cybersecurity head. It's an area that I hope we really provide the tools and resources to make sure we can battle back. Part of that comes with the innovation and technology and keeping companies in the United States. But as a result of the highest corporate tax rates and then Obamacare with those challenges in our own state, the high profit taxes and rules and regulations, and then the high energy costs for manufacturers, potentially going up 50 to 100 percent, all of which things that our Senator Shaheen has supported, uh, there are some real challenges, so I'm concerned. I'm not sure. First of all, on the, uh, on the cyber capability, you're right to be concerned. It's a multifaceted. First of all, you have non-state actors, criminal entities that break into private companies and steal personal information, access to bank accounts. Then you have state actors, Russia, China. Uh, then you have failed states like North Korea that has a cyber, cyber capability and Iran. And then you have some of these terrorist groups that are starting to flirt with the cyber realm. And the thing about it is this, you know, these are not countries or entities that can ever build aircraft carriers, but if they can build a cyber capability that blinds our aircraft carriers, or they can conduct a cyber 9-11, uh, for lack of a better term, that hits the financial sector and creates a mass panic in the U.S., these are acts of terror as well, so you have a right to be deeply concerned. And one of the things we have to get better at is creating a field or, or creating a, a system where the private sector can quickly report incidents to the public sector, to government, so we can identify best practices to prevent future attacks and learn the tactics from the ones that are happening. And, and I think that's important. And it goes back to the spending for a moment. You know, not every weapon system, let me, let me make this clear, not every weapon system, just because it has a good name, means it's worthy of it. Every single penny you spend on everything in government, especially defense, has to be well justified. Just because it has a fancy name to it doesn't necessarily the weapons program works. Because if that means that weapons programs that are worthy don't get their money, and it means that new fields, new challenges like cyber, doesn't have the funding available for staying ahead of the curve on it. But cyber is another area of true, true concern. That's why when we talk about national security in the 21st century, it's complex. It's traditional you know, nation states that we have to worry about, the build of Chinese. It's anti-missile defense for the potential of North Korean or Iranian weapons. It's the ability to project power anywhere in the world. That means the Pacific and the Middle East at the same time. But it also means cybersecurity. It also means uh, space warfare and the ability to defend against that. It is truly multifaceted. And it requires us to address all of these challenges equally. You can't do one in favor of the other. That's why every penny we spend has to be well accounted for. Because we can't afford, we never could afford to waste the money. We really can't afford it now. Hey, Chief. Good afternoon. My name's Eddie Evans, former Navy veteran. I want to say that I have family members and friends who are currently serving. And war is not an easy thing. And those of us who have chosen to serve our country, we did it out of love and respect for our country and honoring those who came before us. And I think it's time to elect people like Scott Brown. I'm voting for Scott Brown because he loved our country more than he loved our president. And that's what I'm Joseph Lachance. I'm a veteran from Manchester, New Hampshire. I uh, served in the Army Infantry, 25th Infantry. Uh, during the first Gulf War time frame, I was in the Light Infantry. Fortunately, I wasn't deployed to uh, to the Gulf, but we did the Pacific Rim instead in case we were needed. Um, you guys talked about ISIS, and it's just outrageous that the President says he didn't see this coming. He missed nearly half his, his own intelligence briefings. I'm disturbed that Senator Shaheen missed key foreign relations hearings on ISIS as well. The President and Senator Shaheen owe it to our returning soldiers to do a better job and not to make strategic foreign policy decisions off of what is most politically expedient. I also currently uh, in the state uh, strongly support uh, the Ahumni uh, Warrior Organization. They provide assistance to returning soldiers who are injured in the line of duty. And um, what are they thinking now? What's going on? They got hurt. The folks who gave their life, their limb, their blood, to see everything going away. Everything that we have fought for over this period of time. For what? So um, I also uh, am a member of Concerned Veterans for America, and I would like to thank at you, Senator Rubio, uh, on a recent trip in April 2014, uh, as part of that delegation, uh, we went to speak with you folks on the VA Accountability Act. Um, Senator Shaheen would not meet with me. She would not meet with us. Senator Ayotte met with us twice. 
your office, you met with us. Senator Sheen was nowhere to be found. I could not be more disappointed, but I can tell you, <coughs> Senator Kelly Ayotte met with us in person twice in two days. Senator Ayotte's a true supporter of veterans, and you both are a true supporter of veterans. Thank you. We're going to go one, two, and then wrap it up there with three. Because Marco had it. So, please. Uh, Don Holden, uh, during the Vietnam era, I was uh, on B-52 that had nuclear weapons. Uh, I'm concerned about Iran going nuclear, which also would, would probably lead to other countries in the Middle East also starting up their own programs. They certainly have the monetary resources to do it. What can you as a senator do to try to put some backbone into our discussions with Iran that seem to be going nowhere and allowing them to continue with their nuclear program? Well, first of all, I never would have uh, endorsed Sec uh, the President and Sec uh, Secretary Kerry's efforts in that regard. Uh, I don't trust Iran. Uh, they have never uh, followed through with their promises. Uh, to give them another free shot, so to speak, or the ability not to stick to the original bargain they've already said. They've already missed deadline. Now they may miss other deadlines. We're going to just continue to have that kind of dog and pony show happen. Uh, I don't think that's appropriate. I would have immediately and would move, as I've done before, to uh, reinstate uh, draconian sanctions to let them know that, okay, you had enough time. Uh, we fell for it once, twice, three times. It's over. And that's my plan, because right now Israel is deeply concerned with what's happening with Hamas. Iran is supporting terrorism around the region. To give them a nuclear weapon to export it around the region of the world is not something I support. Once again, Senator Shaheen is a member of the Foreign Relations Committee, has not spoken up and challenged the President or Secretary Kerry to hold their feet to the fire. And that's a problem I will. That's what being an independent, being an independent senator is, Mark. Well, I would add to that.